we're going to talk about living in different countries. Living in different countries takes a lot of effort, but many people do it all the time. I used to live in both Europe and Asia because my parents were first in the military and the teachers for the Department of Defense Dependent Schools. In 2011, Michael of the Economic Collapse on Mont Blanc gives this amazing statistic. According to the U.S. State Department, 6.3 million Americans either work or study outside of the U.S. That's one of the highest numbers ever recorded. Have you ever wanted to live outside of the U.S. but didn't know where to go, what to do, or even where to start? It can all be so very confusing. Figuring out what is involved in moving to a different country takes a lot of research and effort. Now the first question we want to ask ourselves is what kind of barriers might we run across when moving to a different country? For the sake of my speech, let's focus on Germany and Korea for the countries. Now, the languages would be the first barrier you'd run across. Asian languages have a lot more character differences and that are really complex, so they're a little more, more difficult to learn. European languages, like French, German, Italian, Spanish, they're all considered Romance languages, so they tend to be a little bit easier to learn. Paul Schubertum of Frankfurt International School says about 95 billion people know how to speak German in the world. The German alphabet is very similar to the English alphabet with a few differences such as different characters or different pronunciations of letters. V, the V sound, which is what how W is pronounced, d uh, brought worst, which is how Germans say it, and brought worst is how Americans say it. Alfred Jensen, a teacher of Korean language, says that Korea has the only truly phonetic alphabet in Asia. That alphabet is called Hangul. Reading and writing Korean is a lot easier because of the Hangul alphabet. Spoken Korean is far more difficult to learn because of the dif different word changes and the different respect levels needed to be used. I never truly mastered either language, but I got a lot closer to German than I ever did in Korean. The second mis uh, barrier would be misconceptions. I remember when we first moved to Korea, my family member was, warned us not to leave our dogs out because they might get eaten by the locals. But Paul of a website called Teaching Kimchi says that when it comes down to it, a dog is an animal like any other, and therefore it is technically edible and valued differently in the older Korean culture than in the American one. Now, while we're talking about misconceptions, let's talk about kimchi. Kimchi is a very spicy fermented cabbage. And what most non-Koreans assume that all Koreans love kimchi. When we first went out to a restaurant when we moved to Korea, there's this big bowl of kimchi. I didn't know what it was, so I took a big mouthful. By the time I finished swallowing that, that, that spicy concoction, I, my mouth was on fire, and I swear my sinuses were cleared for days. And I'm sure that it was very comical to watch because of my facial expressions. But like Paul says, still, it's kind of like saying all Americans love hamburgers, isn't it? When assuming that all Koreans love kimchi. Germans have misconceptions as well. Because it's the home of Hitler, and most of the base operations for the Nazis and during the wars were in Germany, a lot of ignorant people assume that all Germans are either Nazis or Nazi supporters. Germans are also considered cold, unfeeling, blunt, and even rude. But I have personal experience that that's not true. Most Germans, in fact, are very friendly and helpful when someone is actually trying very hard to learn their culture and their language. Now getting past the paperwork and the barriers, is the hardest part of moving to a different country. But once you get past those hurdles, the fun part comes, figuring out what there is to do in a different country. James Martin, a European travel guide, discusses in his article on about.com the different war memorials that can be found throughout Europe, especially in Germany. One of the pivotal moments in the Nazi rise to power is the burning of the Reichstag. The seat of the par German parliament is what Norton talks about after commenting on the other World War II memorial sites. One of my uh, favorite quotes that, of, of his is, one must first remember the origin of something in order to look at the outcome of it. 
Auschwitz is another popular war memorial site. It's also one of the more popular Nazi war camps. My senior class went to Auschwitz for a trip and for a senior project. That was one of the hardest trips that I've ever gone on, just knowing the pain and suffering that the occupants went through, the fight for life that so many lost. South Korea's most memorial war site would have to be along the 38th parallel, and it's called the Demilitarized Zone. Britannica says that the DMZ was created by pulling back respective forces about 1.2 miles along each side of the barrier. The zone runs across the width of Korea. While living in South Korea, my JROTC classes went to the DMZ every year for some sort of project. And the first time that I went, I remember I was so excited. And the both sides had guards posted, and they were armed to the teeth, stone-faced and stoic and unmoving. They kind of reminded me of those, those royal guards that guard the London Palace. The, you, the kind that you want to do like crazy stunts to try and get them to, to react, but I sure wouldn't dare because they scared the heck out of me. But it was neat seeing where the peace treaties were signed and being able to stand on both sides of the barrier and knowing that you're in South Korea and in North Korea. It's really cool. While visiting war memorial sites can be both informative and fun, historical sites can also be interesting and exciting. Germany's most popular historical sites would be castles. And one of the better kept castles is New Schwanstein. They're constantly trying to keep, do the upkeep and trying to make sure that everything is not falling apart. It's located in Bavaria, and it was built by Ludwig II way back in like the 18th century, I think. <laughs> and it's a very popular castle to go visit. The trek starts at the base of a very very steep hill, and the walk is at least 30 minutes. But touring the castle itself was exciting. However, I will never understand why the hallways are so small compared to the ginormous halls and the ginormous uh, bedrooms. New Schwanstein is also a popular ski town. Now, the city of Bonn is a great place for music lovers to go visit because that's where Beethoven was born and he lived there until he was uh, until 1792 when he moved to Vienna to study under Mozart. Korea has ancient palaces, gardens, temples, and shrines. Seoul has one of the largest palaces used by ancient Korean royalty that Formos says its Baiwan or secret garden is alone is worth a visit. The gardens around Korea are also known for their stories of faded lovers, which are traditional love stories, such as a nobleman's son falling in love with a courtesan's daughter, but they can never get together. These gardens are popular meeting places for lovers. Living in a different country can be both exciting and frightening. My first experience in Korea started with a huge culture shock because of how different Americans were from the way Koreans were. I remember our sponsor told us to anticipate Koreans wanting to come up and touch my hair because it's curly and it's red and different from their straight black hair. But the warning didn't ease my shock or nervousness the first time it happened. Germany was a lot less of a shock for me. Believe it or not, Germany is very much like America in a lot of ways. And I, honestly, I felt like home there. Living in both countries afforded me the ability to have experiences that I never would have had I stayed in America. There is a lot of work involved in moving to a different country, but I think it's really worth it because of everything that you get to see and everything that you get to experience. And there's so much to do in Asia and Europe that anyone who lives there would be hard put not to have anything to do there. Thank you. Have a great day.